Hey folks, I'm Jack, um, and today I'll be introducing you to Generative Art using P5.js. So to get started, uh, you can get to it at p5.js.org right here. I'm going to also link that below. And so all you should need is a computer with a web browser. Shouldn't matter what kind of computer or what kind of web browser. Um, and you also don't need a programming background to follow along with this, hopefully. This is what um, we will have made by the end of this video, um, following along with this. I'm going to open the editor. I'm just going to open it in a new tab so I keep this page open. This is the web editor for P5.js. So you can just click sign up right here um, and just fill this out. So after you've, after you've signed up, um, we can look at the different parts of the interface. Mainly you have your code here on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, and then you'll have your canvas on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, and so, and there's already some code filled out here, um, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So if you click this play button right here, um, that will uh, just run your code and output it to the canvas here. And also you can click auto refresh. And so anytime you change your code, it will basically be clicking the play button for you. And then also to uh, something to note is below the co your code, you have the console. And um, if you type, if, if something goes wrong, so... If I type that, uh, you see reference error, ASL is not defined. So basically, um, it's trying to give you an error um, to what's wrong with your code. So you'll probably be going back and forth between this video and the web editor and pausing a lot. I, I would also recommend you can use the speed controls. Um, so if I'm going too fast or too slow, you can change how fast I'm talking. Some things, if I don't mention an error, an issue that you're having, you can definitely um, Google it. You could just copy this error and into Google and see what you get. And also there's a reference page, which I will talk about soon, um, which is helpful. And also other YouTube videos about P5.js that you might find useful. So you will see in this code that we have filled out already, um, there's setup and draw, and they are functions, which basically means they're grouping code together here. Um, and But we don't really need to worry too much about that right now. So one thing we're gonna do is create canvas 400, 400. So this is this gray box right here. It's 400 pixels by 400 pixels. So what I'm gonna do is change that so it takes up the whole screen. So what we can do is type in inner width. And so you see it changed to the whole width and I'm gonna say inner height. And that, so that's gonna take up the whole screen. So these are both variables like you might've seen in algebra and also um, set up and draw. That those are functions and they're kind of similar to a function in algebra. You are not going to have to worry too much about that. So all this does is makes this the sketch take up your whole screen. So next what I'm going to do is actually move this um, drawing the background to setup. That will probably make sense later, but basically draw is called um, multiple times. So we're going to draw the background only once in setup. In our final project, we had a circle. So to draw a circle, um, what you can do is you is there's the function called circle. It takes three arguments. It takes an X, a Y, and a size. What I'm gonna do here to place the circle in the middle of the screen is you have two variables. I mentioned variables a little bit before, uh, provided to you. So you have width and height, which is the width and the height of your canvas. So you can say width over two and height over two. And so that'll give you the middle of the screen. And then the size of the circle, I'm just gonna pick something random. I'm gonna say 100. So there you go. Now you have a circle in the middle of your screen. So you might be thinking, where did I find out how to put in these parameters? So what I can do is go back to just the normal homepage, p5js.org. And then we can open up the reference page. Um, so that's you know, this, this link right here. So the reference page has a lot of information about all of the different stuff that's going on with P5.js. You can just scroll down to shape and then you have circle and it'll give you an example. So this is 30, 30 with a size of 20. Um, and also it explains all the parameters right here. So X is a number, X is a Y coordinate. So back to here, something to note is the, this width over two, height over two. So like there's like basic math operators that you can uh, use like that. And um, they work like just how you expect. So this divides width by two and this divides height by two. Um, now, that we, now we're drawing a circle. You can see here, this is a like a black stroke to the color. That's what it's called in a uh, white fill. So what I'm actually gonna do is in the final product, we didn't have a fill. So what I'm gonna do is in setup called no fill, 
Um, and we don't have to worry too much about that, but it does what it says. It won't fill the circle in. And in draw, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of, uh, of the stroke. So you can do that with the stroke function. Again, you could reference the, the reference <laughs> um, and go to stroke and come down here and you'll see that it, ta uh, it takes mainly three arguments, v1, v2, v3, which we're using RGB color. So that's going to be your red, green, and blue, um, your red, green, and blue values for the stroke. So if I say stroke 255, 0, 0, um, that's saying 255 red, 0, zero green, 0 blue. Um, so it's just a red circle. In our final product, we had a random color for the circle. We can generate a random number for each um, red, green, and blue value in stroke. So P5JS does have a function for this, so it's called random. So inside of random, you can pass the maximum value. So random 255 is from 0 to 255. And again, that would be in the reference that you can, and you can find that in there um, for basically anything I'm talking about. So we fill in each color for RGB with random 255. And you see that it's changing really fast. And you might wonder why. So it's because our sketch is being drawn at 60 frames per second, and each frame is calling this our function draw. So you're changing the color to a random value every frame. So the next thing we need to do is be moving the circle around. So what we could do is just assign it a random um, x and y position. You know, uh, we had we we know from before we have width and height, so we could say random width, random height, um, and get a random x y coordinate inside of the canvas. But what I'm my approach is going to be is to assign a variable for the position of the circle and then change that over time. So we're going to make variable up here and it's going to call, be called x and we're going to use the let um, keyword. So it's just let x and let y. What I'm going to be doing here is just saying these are two variables that I want and you notice I haven't given them a value yet. So I'm actually going to give them a value inside of setup. So I'm going to say x equals width over 2 and y equals height over 2. So we're making x and y global variables by declaring them up here. Um, and width and height, they're not available to us yet. So we'll just assign them inside of setup. And then what we can do is change uh, our circle to be drawn at our x and y coordinates. And so nothing changes because we just replaced width over 2 and height over 2 with x and y, which have the same values. Now that we have this variable, we're keeping track of where they are, we can start changing it. So if, for example, you just do x plus equals is a way to just uh, take x and add a certain amount. So you could say x plus equals 10. I mean, you see it just shoots it straight right. That is interesting, but we probably want to add some randomness to um, where it's going. So what we're going to do is be using the, ra the random function again. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set a minimum value and a maximum value. So I'm just going to pick 25 random um, from negative 25 to 25. So it's either going to go left or right. Negative x is left and positive x is right. Um, and then we can do the same for y. So y plus equals random negative 25, 25. And so this is essentially the final product. Usually, um, although it is random, your circle is just going to walk off the screen, um, right? And pr might not come back. So it would be nice if we could figure out when that happens and then set it back onto the screen. So for that, what we're going to do is use an if statement. So an if statement will only run some code given a condition. So we can say if our x is more than width, so width, again, is the, is the width of the canvas. If our x has randomly gotten bigger than the width, we can set it equal to zero. Our x will go off the right side of the screen and then come back on the left side like it's, like it's looping over. And we can also do that for the other side. So we can say if x is less than zero, x equals width. So that basically does the opposite. Go off the left side and loop back onto the right. And then we can do the same idea for y. So if y is more than height, y equals 0. So positive y is down, negative y is up, um, which is a little bit confusing. If it goes off the bottom, it will come back up the top. And then do the same for going off the top. It will come back on the bottom. Our circle is randomly walking around. 
and if it hits an edge, it will loop back around that edge. So one thing I might do is change the background, say background 255, which is white. So this is basically the same color as a stroke, but if you only give it one value, it'll set that for all of them. So all 255 is white. Finally, uh, something you might, you might notice is that you kind of wanted to fill up the whole page and have sort of a, a finished image um, for this. What you can do is use a loop. So I'm going to breeze over this a bit, but we'll set i equal to zero. We will loop until i, uh, as long as i is less than 10,000, and we'll add i every loop. Um, and we're just gonna call draw. So what that does is it just, it calls draw 10,000 times before you see anything. And you don't need to worry too much about a for loop. That's not necessary to know, but you can you can essentially just copy this code and it'll work like that. Once you've gotten the, once you've gotten your image that you like, you can uh, right click this and you can click save image as, um, and then you can just click save. And so now you have this saved as an image wherever you want. Okay, that's about all I have. Um, I highly suggest you keep experimenting with P5JS. The, the reference page, like I've talked about, is great. Like just, you could just pick a, a random shape and just draw it or scrolling down here, functions that will trigger when the mouse is pressed and stuff like that. You can also get the position of the mouse on the screen. So there's a ton of different stuff for you to explore and that's a great way to learn. And if you're watching this before, I believe it's November 12th, I'll be reviewing this video, the, co the concepts in it, answering questions. That's through Communication Madison, which I'll link below. I'd also like to shout out the Coding Train. He does P5JS videos very similar to this. They're great. I would definitely check them out. So thanks for watching and have a good one.